Hi, I'm Holly Tolman and welcome back to another How To Tuesday with Burnt Pie Holly Pyrography. Thanks for joining me. So today we're getting into talking about flight feathers, primarily your primary and secondary flight feathers on your wings and your tail feathers. Reason being, these are the stiff feathers that people tend to collect in their travels that are perfect for doing research on that make great pyrography burnings. In order to keep you on the top of your game, it's important that before you start any pyrography that you do a little bit of research. I have drummed up a little bit of information for you so that you can get to know exactly what f the characteristics of a feather are so that you can carry them out in your drawings and in your pyrography. So before we get to burning or laying out anything on a piece of wood, we are going to start by looking over the parts of a feather so that we can apply the proper techniques and use the right tips that will mimic an actual feather. Now I have here some feathers that I've collected from my chickens out back and a couple of birds that have been on my property and I figured I'd share them with you to show the differences in types of feathers that there are. So today I'm going to start off with tail feathers. Now tail feathers are commonly known as rectrices. These beautiful feathers can have some beautiful patterns and designs and they come with certain characteristics that make them what they are so that they're identifiable. What you'll find is that each tail feather has a shaft or a rachis that runs down the center of the feather. Uh, now the tail feather you'll find is relatively stiff and this is because it acts as if it's a rudder kind of telling the bird whether to go up or down or side to side um, and so they need these feathers to be stiff and interlocking in order for them to to have the strength that the bird needs to fly you'll see that the individual barbs and barbules work together unless you split them and separate the hooklets the reason that I'm telling you this is because when you go to draw or when you go to burn a feather, it's going to imp be important that you notice these details in your own burning. Flight feathers, however, on the wings are divided up into primary, secondary, and tertiary. Now, the primary and secondaries are where we're going to be focusing our time when we're looking at the details of a feather. So what you'll notice about this primary feather is that the anterior vein, which is this one right here, has a large imagination right here. So let's say you were burning this feather, you'd want to include that if your goal is to draw or burn a anterior vein on a feather. Notice the detail that there are the barbs are more open towards the shaft or the rachis of the feather and that they're more close together towards the the exterior here so all these little details make up parts of your burning and the techniques that you're going to be using to do them so to get us started i chose this beautiful little flight feather there's some fun little breaks and some imperfections within each barb and barbule setting and so i thought this would be a great way to start off to give you some ideas on the, the types of um, techniques that you can use to do your feather. We're just going to give a rough outline of the actual feather. Now, if you would like to actually trace the feather, this is actually a great method to get your pattern onto your wood. You don't need to draw it right on paper and transfer it. You can just draw it straight on your wood. Um, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to draw it on paper first so that I can give you um, a rough instruction on the types of details to include in your feather. To have the details that you want to include in your burning. Each feather, dependent on the type that it is, has a distinct shape and the shaft or rachis of the feather actually has a proper direction and placement. So you'll find that in tail feathers it is or straight down the center and has symmetrical veins whereas on flight feathers that they are asymmetrical. So you want to make sure that because this is a flight feather that you have that detail in there. So one side should be bigger than the other and the shaft or rachis should be curved. Now for this distinct feather, it doesn't have a proper calamus. So a typical calamus has a rounded edge. Now a cool and interesting fact is that it's hollow. So it's kind of neat. 
Now, each feather has barbs and that's these beautiful little lines that you see coming out. Now for the pattern for when you're actually doing your wood burning, you're not going to want to draw in each and every barb. Reason being, this is where you're allowed a little bit of artistic license to create a piece of artwork. So you can um, essentially separate them, uh, you can overlap them, you can uh, cut them off short or leave them long. But the thing is, is that if you start drawing in every single little detail, you're going to have a lot of graphite on your wood and it's easy to get lost in the image uh, that you're trying to draw. So a little artistic license never hurts, but what would be important is that you include the direction that each barb has. So if you notice a heavy curve on a barb, um, feel free to put that one in there. Um, or if you notice that they're very wide open, I would throw those in there. If you notice that at some point they come very, very close together, I'd put that in there. So the, the different types of directions is what you're going to want to put in your pattern for your burning. For a tail feather, same as before, you're gonna to wanna to look at the overall shape. This is a central feather. Uh, again, you're gonna follow the, the basic shapes because you want it identifiable. You'll notice that there's a very round form here and a very straight symmetrical, almost rectangle here. So we're gonna draw that in. And like I said, you are more than welcome to trace the feather itself. That's a great way to do it. But if you wanted to draw it larger or if you wanted to draw it smaller, you're going to require a little bit of, um, a little bit of like blowing up or shrinking on the printer and scanner. But if you draw it, you can actually just kind of put the details in yourself. Now, um, always keep in mind that your um, calamus at the bottom or quill at the bottom is uh, thicker here than at the tip. It almost disappears. Um, so you wanna make sure that you keep that in mind as well. And so you can make a, um, make a marking to reflect that and it tapers at the edge. And again, much like our flight feather, we are going to mark out the rough direction of our barbs and barbules. And as you can see here, I have a, an overlap that I created for the purposes of this burning. So we are going to throw that in there as well. And a little bit of these details, you'll notice it's not perfectly straight. So I'm just kind of making it indicative of that. And then what you'll notice here is that as we go to the base or as we go to the bottom of our feather here, um, both sides, both veins uh, come to a softer set of barbs and barbules. And what we call these are pinaceous barbs right here. And these here are Cumulaceous barbs, which means they're softer. And so this gives you the ability to use um, a different technique as well in our burning. And you'll see that a little bit later. But what I would do is just draw in a rough area of where your plumulaceous <laughs> barbs <laughs> are in your feather so that you don't forget to put those details in. So if you've decided to draw a pattern on paper first and transfer it, um, just a quick review, you will take your graphite paper, make sure the graphite site is down, slip it underneath your drawing onto your piece of wood, wood that's been prepped and sanded properly, and you will lay it out by tracing over your design and have it marked onto your wood. If not, if you tried the other way, which was tracing the feather directly on the wood, you'll have something that looks like this. Now, it's important for you to take a good look at your design and make sure that it's exactly what you want, that it's centered properly, and so on. In general, when you're working on a piece of um, wood, you're going to want to make sure that your wood complements your image and that you're using the wood to its full potential. There is characteristics that can be brought out in the wood in your drawing, and so you want to work with that as much as possible. Now to get us started, we've decided to use our Razor Tip SSD 10 10 Amp Detail Burning System. 
So for those interested in knowing what I'm using to start off our piece of art today, I am using our interchangeable tip uh, made by Razor Tip uh, with our Bird Carver's Micro 5P, uh, 5 Tip Set. Um, inside it, I found this beautiful little skew and I added a little bit of a bend on it and it just became the perfect go-to tip for me. So it has a little bit of all the fun details that I like in a tip. And so that's what I'll be using. Um, however, I highly recommend a spear or a sharp skew so that we can get down to business into the nitty gritty of all the fine details that you'll find in a feather. So the number one rule when looking for a tip for you to do your burning is always use the one that you are most comfortable with. We're going to look at a few tips that can help you on your journey to create your feather. As mentioned, we are using the razor tip SSD 10. With that being said, we also have alongside our Colwood cup. I like to use both burning systems so that you can get a feel that it doesn't really matter what system you're using. You can do artwork with no matter what you have. If you take a look at the razor tip catalog that comes with any type of razor tip system, inside you'll find a variety of tips that are specially created for the creation of feathers. The tips that you will find in this catalog that are specifically geared to, towards creating feathers are actually made with carvers in mind. Wood carvers will use things like shaft making tips and things like this to create detail and and other structural components of feathers with their burning systems. For the purposes of our design today, we are doing a portrait and therefore you can choose any type of tips imaginable. But for us today, I'm going to focus on our spears and our skews. I already have my temperature set to what I like. I'll go to the back of the piece of wood, make sure that it's not burning hotter than I'd like it to. This is my piece of basswood. It's been sanded and prepped already for me. So I'm very content with what I see and what I'm starting with. So I'm going to start with the shaft. And the reason I'm starting with the shaft is so that I have a spot that I can lay my pen in as I create my barbs. Now remember the barbs are the pieces of feather that come off the rachis or the shaft, um, these pieces here. And so what I wanna do is create an actual line that I can start. So I'm gonna start by creating the rachis and make sure that I have it at a lower temperature. I'm going to stop, start from the top where it's very thin and very faint and I'm going to slowly work down the shaft to connect my piece. Now, as you can see, I've actually created a really rough line at a quick pace so that I have something to follow and darken it up. As with any wood burning, you want to build on your line work as opposed to putting in a really heavy dark mark out to begin with. That way, if you make an error and you want to fix it, you can go back and repair the damage. Make a perfect line and remember that shafts, rachises, or any other type of natural element in any type of wood burning is going to have some variation. And so again, a little artistic license goes a long way. So I want you to notice that I'm not pressing very hard. I'm actually just working and rebuilding the line over and over again until it's exactly what I would like. And you can increase or decrease your speed based on what you want that line to look like. But you will notice that because this wood is very soft, that there is actually a small indentation where my pen sits. Now pushing very hard is not desirable. However, that tiny little indentation gives way to a place for our pen to sit and start when we go to create our barbs. If I didn't create this line, what you'll notice is right here where the tail end or the rear of my tip actually hit the line, I've now gone over it. So if I didn't make that line, it would be very difficult to try and create those barbs without a guideline. You can then go over top 
and make those small little overages disappear. The thicker you make the line, the easier it is to create your barbs. Okay, when we take a good look at our barbs on this feather, you will notice that although they are very different, they are all very much the same. Let's see if I can focus. There, you'll notice that they're all very much the same and that the spacing between them is relatively even. So what you want to accomplish is to try and make the barbs coming off of your rachis at the same distance between each other. And what this will allow us to do is we will have a place to start when we go to finish our barbs. Pay mind that when you're looking at your feather, remember those guidelines that we put in to whether or not the V of the veins, if it's a narrow, very narrow V, or whether it's a wide V. So we have our posterior vein uh, filled in here and our shaft. Um, is our, our shaft guideline is well established and what we're going to do is we're just going to go over top and tidy up any of our, our overages from our guidelines while we're still able. You'll see them there and I'm going to make them disappear just like that. And they actually have, Razor Tip actually has a um, shaft making tip, which is really cool. Um, so you can add a little bit more pressure. You use it on a heavier duty pen and cord, and it allows you to actually push that indent into the wood, which is so cool for carvers. Now, we're gonna do the other side now. Now I find that when I am doing a line that requires the same type of detail on both sides that it's easier for me to actually take my wood and flip it upside down. This will allow me to put the hard line of my tip on the outside and keep the softer side where it's been beveled on the inside. This will almost give the quill a, a rounded type shape and it will allow us to formulate our shading in the, the quill um, and in the shaft of the feather um, much more easily. So. I'm just going to quickly go and do that and you can follow along on time lapse. So to shade uh, the shaft or the rachis, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to actually use a shading technique that I like to call the push and drag. Um, so what it is, is now that we've made a guideline, you can take your pen and stick it within that groove, lay it slightly on its side and drag it across. And by doing that in tiny little increments, you can create a, a rounded look to your shaft. And if you notice that there, that it's almost like, um, showing these little markings, you want it to be more smooth. So feel free to turn down your temperature. And if you don't have a bevel on your tip, you might find that this scratches the wood. And if you are working in a heavy grain, um, it will actually cause little like pits. So it's important to either A, have a bevel or B, use a wood like bass or birch that doesn't have much um, graininess to it. And what we're trying to do is essentially feather out, excuse the pun, uh, feather out this dark line that we've created to make it look more natural. You can also um, drop and pull, which is a a, a, also a shading technique that you can use here. And this increases the, the tone of your pen color, but it also creates a rounded look to it. So before you move on to actually creating the barbs in your feather, you may want to take some practice strokes on the back of your piece. Moving right along, we're going to actually take the toe of our tip and begin to place it within the grooves that we've already made along the shaft and pull it slowly towards the outside of the feather. This will make our barbs stand out and have nice, clean, symmetrical lines all throughout.
As with most pyrography, this part is the tedious part. A lot of line work and a lot of repetition. So as we move into the details of the feather, what you'll notice is that I put in some minor guidelines to help me understand where the feather has overlapping each other. From here, I can start to decipher exactly where I want my shadows and start to put in those guidelines as well. Just as we did with the shaft, we put in some minor guidelines along the edge of the feather to create the shadow and the movement in the barbs. So here we go. So we have our guidelines in. We have some rough ideas of where our lines are gonna start and stop here. We have some rough color changes and direction changes of feathers here. And um, as you can see, we've got some open spots and some very faint lines through here. So remember with our feather, and when we started out, we had made mention that our burning is not going to be identical to our feather. We are trying to make something that looks similar and a piece of artwork. In order to bring in some realism to this feather, I'm going to start adding in some color details and some shadowing. The idea behind this is to create depth where there isn't any and minimize our mistakes or make them disappear. And so we just go through and go over our artwork and create details to minimize the effects of those mistakes. So, because this feather has a dark side and a light side with a little bit of detail, I'm gonna put that detail in. To create the detail along the side of the regus, I'm putting in some dark marks. Now, as we learned when we were doing our barbs in the first place, dependent on where you start your burning, whether you use the tip or whether you use the hind or the rear, wherever you lay the pen first, the marks are darker and then they slowly taper off. So as long as this area is being recovered by going over top of it once more in the opposite direction, it doesn't become a starting or a stopping point. And so what you'll end up getting is if you work back and forth in the same spot, you will end up with a taper on both sides instead of one hard edge like this. So when you get into trying to do these little details, okay, what you wanna do is set your pen in at the tip and slowly work back and forth in the same spot, making sure that you don't start in the same identical spot first. So I don't know if you can see this, but what I did is wherever I laid my pen, and I tapered it off one way, I dropped it just before that spot and tapered it the opposite direction. What this does is hides where you started your pen mark. What you will find is that the more detail that you put into your feather that is as realistic as possible to the feather you're copying, the more that the little mistakes of where your barbs start and stop actually are hidden. We're gonna go back into our, our feather and look at all these little details that we see regarding shadowing. Now, as the, the barbs and barbules are latched together with these little locklets, they, or hooklets, sorry, they tend to have a ripple effect through here. And so the only thing that you need to do to create those is highlights and lowlights. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to create a pattern type effect making some dark spots, followed by some light spots. Now again, you're following the original barbs that you drew, and all you're doing is just building over top of what you've already drawn. And once your details are darkened, then you can go back and I highly suggest you turn your pen right down because you're gonna build, build, build for this one, is go back over the whole area lightly and just shade, smoothing over top of the whole set of barbs in that dark area that you created. 
And what this will do was, is sort of feather out the shade area that you've created. Creating the ripple effect that we are trying to achieve. It gives you the ripple effect. And you can continue this for as long as you feel comfortable. You don't always have to go over the individual barbs. You can just add some shadowing and some shading with this technique. Hard lines make it less realistic. So the softer your markings. Now here we have an area where the, this feather overlaps this one. And naturally anywhere where a feather overlaps is gonna be lighter than what's underneath it. So we're gonna come in here and we're gonna put a small shadow. Here's another fun technique for you to try. So if you take your burner and turn it to a really light temperature, like one or two, and you come in and you create your um, barbs by adding a slight bit of pressure. Obviously the temperature is really low, so you don't make a heavy mark. What this does is it actually cuts the mark into the wood. And if you feel it, you can actually um, feel the, the barb that you've drawn. And then you take your wood burner and you turn it up to a hotter temperature. And then you just lightly skim the top with the flat side. What you'll do is you'll burn really hot on top of the surface of the wood. But because you've already cut into it, it doesn't reach the parts of the feather that are underneath that you've carved in. So it's almost as if you're reverse burning and you get our awesome detail by adding this dark color without having to try to retrace all of your barbs. It just adds a lot of depth and some character for sure. Another thing that you'll notice in this feather uh, and in this piece of artwork um, as a whole is that there's some graininess. So because the grain goes right through my feather, you'll notice some of the grain work inside the feather. And what it's actually doing is creating um, markings on the feather that I didn't necessarily intend. So instead of trying to get upset with it or cover it up, I wanna use it to my advantage. So what I'm gonna do is do that reverse technique that I taught you. I'm gonna come through and just add, see all these little tiny specks on this feather here. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to use this area as a benchmark or starting those details. And I'm just gonna allow my pen to sit there just long enough to make it look almost black, but uneven speckles as if it was the feather itself. And again, I don't want any hard lines, so I can come back and add some depth to some more of them over here. And then what I'm gonna do is spend a little bit of extra time just below that mark and do the same thing. What this will do is hide that line that we found with our grain. It won't be perfect, but it will definitely, definitely make a difference. It won't be quite as noticeable. And that's how you would hide a grain mark. So our feather, our details are looking really great, but our barbs, 
go out to the ends, not in a perfectly straight line, like our pencil would have us believe. So what we're gonna do is turn your temperature down to a one or two and go back to your barbs and bring them out just past your pencil mark. What this will do is it will bring out your feather to a, uh, outside your drawing line. That way when you erase it, there will be a faint, faint, faint mark of where your barbs are. And when you go to do your background, all those tiny little details are gonna stand out. So let's get to it. So thanks for joining me for another How To Tuesday with our burning of a feather. I hope you enjoyed today's class and tutorial and you join me next week on our How To Tuesdays. And remember to hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed what you saw and please make sure you leave your comments below so that I can help teach you better.